All right, well, Cody Meyer's in the boat again. We're having a lot of fun in the upper state here in New York. Uh, out here on some random lake, oh, I don't even know, how you say it? Hey, I, I'm not sure, but <laughs> it's New York. There's largemouth and there's lots of grass. Lots of grass, lots of bass. We caught a big old muskie. Make sure and stay tuned for the vlogs. We're gonna have a lot of fun and catch more of these. I got some, some brand new, fresh off ICAST Yamamoto baits, evergreen stuff. We're on Lake Otisco. This is, I don't know if this is one of the Finger Lakes, but. It's the smallest Finger Lake. Smallest Finger Lake. This place is gorgeous. We've both never seen this lake. And you know what, Jared? I'm excited to get back in the boat with you, man. I mean, it's gonna be fishing. fun. It's, it's gonna, gonna be, be fun. fun. I got some new jackal stuff we're gonna throw. I got those new uh, robo worms. So actually, you just, you were like, why have you been hiding those? What, what are those? Yeah, so we got all the cool new stuff. This is the first time. We've been fishing basically other than Lake Cayuga since ICAST. So all the new release stuff is here. We're excited. I wanted to get to fishing, man. This this looks like this is gonna be a good place. Let's do it. Dude, what are you, what are you doing? Is this in reference to the Shasta shoot? Live action. We're doing it live. Oh. <laughs> Dude, are you okay? Oh. I'm so sorry, dude. <laughs> oh, no, damn. Are you bleeding? I don't think. No. Woo! <laughs> I'm awake. <laughs> I just freaking knocked him out, dude. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just, this is here for my own protection here. That is, you're gonna fish without the whole, <laughs> well, I mean, we might get out a big weight. You might need that. Hey. Right. <laughs> and ready to go. Oh my God. Dude. Dong. Mm. Oh. That was cool. That was an awesome bite. A little lifting technique. Dude, that slack lined it. Look at that thing, dude. Oh my God. Dude, you got a pirate. Dude, it's a, a big old. Dude, I don't know what it is. Dude, you got a muskie. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That is awesome. Look at him. Cody, go live him. Hey, let me, hold on. Yeah. Put your helmet on and go get him. He literally got a muskie, man. People fish their whole lives for those. Look at that. Right, <laughs> I gotta somehow figure out how to get a hold of this guy. Dude. Look at that thing. Like, <laughs> hey, I've been catching some pike all week but I've only ever caught one muskie in my entire life on Lake St. Clair. Look at the fins on this Look thing, at the man. teeth on that sucker. Yeah, look at the teeth. Hey, so what they say is you do not want to ever put your hand because the teeth go nah, backwards. I'm gonna let him go because he's slicing my hand. <laughs> you know, when you swung, I saw like a flash and I'm like, what the heck? All right, Jared, so Yo. what's the deal, man? You said lifting technique. Well, you know, like when we were at Clear Lake, we were doing that yo-yo technique, kind of a lifting technique. With the you trap know, with the trap and, and yeah. TN70. But, <clears throat> you know, a chatter bait, a vibrating jig, pretty much, you know, guys throw it out there in the grass, wind it. But there's a different way to fish it. Just, you know, doing that same kind of lifting, let it get in that grass and rip it out. And, uh, it's, you know, it's got a single hook, so it's going to tear free of that grass, especially when you get that real crisp stuff like that's floating on the water. Um, that's what you're trying to do. And when you rip it free, that's when it's going to trigger that bite. So, hey, all I know. Catch this big muskie. I know that. Five minutes into the trip and you've caught a muskie. I'm a muskie magnet. <laughs> you got to pump it. Oh, God. Oh, I got a bite too. Nice. Dude. <laughs> right underneath the boat. Dude, that's a nice one. What is Holy it? Holy cow. This thing is. Is that a smallmouth? What is it? I don't know what it is, but it is me. I got bit too. Same thing. Oh, oh look at that. Dang, dude. dude. That's a nice one. <laughs> hey, Slinko Bass, dude. Get it started. Look how dude, thick that's this a, dude is. That's a pretty one, Cody. Wow. Hey, musky. Now a bass, check that out. Hey Jared, I'm throwing, this is brand new for my cast here. 
new from Yamamoto. It's called the Slinko, and what it is, it's a five and a half inch bait. Um, it's like a Senko. You can see the ribs on here though, but this thing is a floater, so it's floating above the grass. And dude, that thing, that thing smoked it. Musky and a bass, man. That's awesome. Hey, that's a thick one, dude. I They're so the pretty one. up here in you know northern part of the country. I know, beautiful fish, man. Dude, that thing smoked its. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> 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 Well, that didn't take long. So what's the deal? How you, the Slinko. Slinko, yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm throwing this guy Texas rigged here, a little quarter ounce tungsten weight and uh, just rigging it with a, a four-aught owner hook here. This is, like I say, this is brand new. This is a mowed grass color, but this thing is a high floating bait. So I'm throwing it out on a Texas rig. You know, we're fishing this, this deep grass and I'm not pegging the weight. So when I pop this thing up out of the grass, the weight's gonna come down and that Slinko is gonna have a, a slow fall and kind of go down. And I'm just kind of working it up out of the grass and then letting it fall on slack line. And you know, that's, that's how I like to fish some of this deeper grass. You know, you get in some of these areas and you hopefully you find multiple fish, but I like to pop it out, let it fall down through there I'm throwing this on a 16 pound fluorocarbon right now. And you know what's cool, Jared, is this is the brand new Tatula 80. You know, yeah. this, is, this is brand new, just got released at ICAST. It's a smaller reel, so it's, it's perfect for, you know, younger anglers, um, you know, like my wife loves this reel. You have smaller hands, whatever it might be. Um, or if you wanna just throw those more finesse baits, real light, pairing this up with the Tattoo Elite. This is a seven foot finesse rod with Brent Aether, but what a cool combination here from Daiwa and what a fun bite, man. So I wanna to touch on something you just said because I get asked this a lot and I want your opinion on it. You said you're not pegging your weight, I'm pegging my weight. So when you're fishing offshore like this, one train of thought or one school of thought, like me, I want that weight to get down in the grass so that's why I peg it. You're saying, not peg it, which makes sense because yeah. the weight's going to go down, but your bait's going to stay up. Yes. So, so that's what I like. So when, if I'm flipping, you know, flipping grass and you want it directly down, right. then of course I'm going to always peg it. But today with this Slinko here, like I say, this is a floating bait. It's five and a half inches. And I want that thing to kind of trail down and fall, um, you know, as I'm pulling that bait down, you know, it's going to float above the grass, but it just gives a little bit better action to me and so maybe that's what i'm doing wrong well we did just get started <laughs> <laughs> but uh it's just something i like to do you know clear lake and stuff growing up lake of the pines california we fish a lot of deep grass well, and see i asked mark davis this which i mean he's a legend of the sport yeah. obviously and he was like what do you mean isn't it obvious and i'm like what are you talking about and he goes when to peg it and when not. And I'm like, no, Mark, it's not to me. Yeah. I go, if I'm flipping, like you said, if I'm flipping, I'm pegging. Yeah. And, you know, it depends on how tall the grass is. If I want to, he's like, yeah, but there's a lot more that goes into it. And I'm like, you know, it's, it's just one of those questions. It, it's the same thing. Like there's no black or white, you know, this is how you fish this bait. Yeah. Bass fishing is, there's a million different ways. There's a million different ways. Every day it's different. You know, but I always usually start on something like this. We're fishing deep grass. You know, this grass is coming out. Uh, we're in 10 foot of water and it's five foot tall. And then there's literally a drop, a break. So we're fishing kind of off the break, right on top. I always start off not pegging the weight, you know, when you're casting a Texas rig around. Uh, but if I'm flipping, I'm always going to peg it. So just something to think about. Yeah. No, Mark Davis is in the Hall of Fame for sure, so he, oh, yeah. he knows. I'd like to spend the day in the boat with him. Just I'd, I'd probably just sit there and learn. Really good worm fisherman, yes. for sure. Yes. There's one right underneath the boat. Dude, nice. I've seen them on the Panoptics. Look at that one. Dude, they are thick. That was awesome. Dude, I've seen them on the Panoptics, and I shook my worm up to it, made a big hop, and it just went boom. That's on the new Robo Worm. I just got these a little while back. Come here. It's a pretty little little fish. Um, that's on the new Robo Worm. I'll show you here in a minute. 
But uh, like I said, I hopped it up out of that grass and he, he clocked it. I mean, that was an awesome bite. I'm gonna let him go. But uh, pegging, we just talked about peg or not peg. I got my, my setup here, peg, Texas rig. This here's a 5 16 ounce uh, Eco Pro tungsten weight and a three aught trocar offset worm hook. Um, and I'll show you these worms here in a minute. The way I got it rigged though, yeah, is, is I got it pegged, obviously, and Cody's fishing it not pegged. But uh, so a bit bold so far, we'll see what happens. Um, this here is a new seven foot five bottom contact two steez rod. Now, when you're fishing something like this, a, a really good rod is like a seven to seven and a half foot uh, medium heavy action rod, um, seven to one gear ratio reel. This here is the New Zillion SVTW. And I'm throwing this on 18 pound line just because we are in up, upper state New York. There's pike, there's musky, and the bass really don't seem to be line shy, especially when you get off the beaten path like we kind of are here today. So 18 pound shooter uh, by Sunline. And uh, yeah, let me show you these worms. They're pretty cool. I actually just got them after I cast. So that color right there is called John's Juice. So this is what they look like here. It's called the Magic Worm. Um, so Missile Baits and Robo Worm collaborated, got together, and they pretty much, John came up with these colors. It's a black and blue color. I might try that. Uh, but really cool worm. It's a great shaky head worm, a great Nico rig worm. Um, obviously I'm Texas rigging it, so a lot of different ways to fish it. It's just, you know, like I said, it's brand new to me. So they got some really cool colors. Magic pumpkin red, that looks good. I mean, they all look good. This one, this one could do some damage. Morning dawn, Cody. Mm, leave it out. Are you gonna throw it? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna rig a different one up and see. And the other thing, Cody, give me the pot skis. I just lathered it up with potski. You got your you got your juice here. I gotta gotta put my potskis on. Bass scent. No musky scent. Bass scent. I just slide that on there. I'm gonna try this morning dawn color just to see. And we'll go from there. Oh bye, dude. Oh, there he is. Oh my God. Dude, that's like a bass, only smaller. It's a bass, only smaller. Hey, still fun still though. Still fun though, huh? Yeah, the thing clobbered it good. On the Slinko? On the Slinko. Fish landing violation. That's all right. Our fish release violation. We'll take it today. <laughs> you gotta sit for two minutes. <laughs> you gotta rub Corey's feet. That's your penalty. Dude, I drilled that sucker though. I just caught one on a Texas rig. Picked up the big weight with a little punch skirt. Drop it in this grass. We've been throwing these Texas rig worms, you know, traditional Texas rig, but I couldn't resist, man. There's this deep grass right here, and I dropped a big old weight, little Jackal Archelon, one ounce, or actually that's three quarter ounce Eco Pro Tungsten. Cool little, I mean, that's a pretty fish. That's how they're supposed to look. Yeah, I Except like it. Bigger, hopefully. But that was a good bite. This here is the new uh, Tatula XT, seven foot six uh, heavy flipping rod. And, uh, you know, when you're doing stuff like this, any rod seven foot six to eight foot is what I would recommend. Um, you know, kind of that medium heavy to heavy. Uh, you wanna, when you're flipping this deep grass, you don't want too stiff of a rod because you'll take it away from them. They, they won't get it as good. So you want a little bit of a bend in that rod. So when they load up, you got them, get them in the boat. And uh, man, that was fun. Maybe they'll happen again, Cody. You know, Jared, one thing that I've learned with fishing grass is it doesn't seem like when you get a bite, you get multiple bites. You know, that's what we did with the Texas rig first thing. Uh, when we started here, we got two bites. We caught that muskie as well. So, you know, when you find areas like this in the grass throughout the country, you really want to slow down and try to pick it apart because usually 
there's more than one fish in there, you know, from what I've seen. You know, talking about that Texas rig though, I remember when I first started fishing, the old, you know, standard Texas rig lizard, Texas rig, you know, hand pour worms. Remember those Don Ivino worms way back in the day? Uh, and then it's funny how as fishermen, we're always looking for the next best thing, but in actuality, you can go anywhere in the country. Usually, I mean, you're around pretty much and throw a Texas rig worm, craw, lizard, and you're gonna get bit. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I remember even the Northern California Clearwater Reservoirs, the doodling yes, with the Texas doodling, rig, yep. brass and glass. But that is something so true. I mean, we're here in New York, we're throwing it today. You could go obviously to Texas, the Carolinas, wherever you might go. It's just a, um, it's a good way to get a bite. It's simple fishing. You have a weight, you have a hook, you can make it weedless, you can fish it through about basically anything and usually get a lot of bites. So something that, uh, you know, you just have to have in your arsenal being a tournament guy, but uh, you know, you're a Texas rigging too. You just got a heavier weight right now. Yep, yep. So let's see if there's more than one here and maybe get on to something a little different maybe. Oh, it's in the GoPro. Look at that hog. <laughs> Dude, hogged them up. Here, get up there. Well, we're getting some bites. I'm flipping this. What kind of grass is this? Milfoil? It looks like milfoil to me, yes. Kind of a mix. There's a little bit of cabbage stuff in there, but pretty little fish. You can tell they've been living in that grass how dark their backs are. Let him go. But. Man, this is fun. This is my, one of my favorite ways to fish, flipping deep grass, you know, and just dropping that weight down in there. I lost my bobber stop, so I gotta put a new one on. But the other key feature with this setup is this eight to one gear ratio to Tula Elite pitch flip reel. Can't say enough good things about it. When you when you got a big rod like this, uh, Cody's got the same setup, except for he's using the what, the Tula Elite. Uh, this is the eight foot, punch and flip rod by um, Ish Monroe. So awesome rod, super sensitive. And But you're right with this reel, the Tatula Elite Pitch and Flip. So you can see right here, it's a regular Tatula. You can see the difference, how much bigger the paddles are um, and the fact that they're round. So when you get those fish on, you just, you got a lot of leverage to get them up out of that grass. So 40 pound um, SX1 braid. Um, you know, when I'm flipping this kind of structure, kind of not mats, I'll, I'll, I want to throw the lightest braid I can get away with. And so I get rigged that up with 40 pound uh, earlier in the week to flip that deep grass. And here we are at, how do you say this lake? Otisco? Oh, uh, Otisco, yes. Otisco. You so. know what, we've been, we've been out fishing, you know, that Texas rig kind of in the open water. We just came up and, and you flipped that first fish in that grass. This stuff is, is matted up, it's thicker. You know, we're punching still, like I say, it's still a Texas rig. But, you know, it just makes sense for these bass, the sun's up high, for them to bury down in here. And there's an edge as well, you know, uh, they, they could travel in and out of here, you know, so it's kind of open right here, but they're gonna be on that, on that, that edge and that thicker grass, you know, when there's grass like this, this is where these bass are gonna live. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can see too, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but there's a lane here of the grass. There's a lane out there and out here in the middle, there's a little bit of short grass. So <clears throat> if they're in this area, you know, they might move out to this open water somewhat to feed early in the morning, late in the evening or something like that. But he's right, when the sun gets up, like it's straight over our heads right now, they're gonna be buried in that stuff, the majority of them I would feel. So we gotta get around the right little group and do some damage, I gotta retie. All right, so this is my setup. You know, when I'm flipping this milfoil like this, it's in six to eight, nine foot of water, um, but it's not really surface matted out where I need a big, heavy punch weight. So I, what I did is I got a three quarter ounce Eco Pro uh, flipping weight, and I got a bobber stop. Here's just little, these things are cheap, really inexpensive to buy, the Eagle Claw bobber stop. I like red sometimes, it really doesn't matter. Black and blue, uh, with Green Pumpkin G Money Punch Skirt, four-aught Monster Flip Trocar Hook. That is essential right there. Um, just because it doesn't have any flex. So when you got these heavy rods, heavy braid, 
you're putting a lot of torque on the fish, you don't want to hook to flex at, uh, at all because you'll lose them. So that's really important, monster flip hook. And then I put on the Archelon. This here's a little bluegill looking color. Um, and you just simply Texas rig it. And the reason I like this Archelon is a pretty good size profile bait. It's got ribs on it and those little, you know, tentacles or trailers, whatever you want to call it, appendages, um, really create a lot of action. It mimics a crayfish, several different kinds of bait fish. So uh, in this clear water, I went with more of a natural color like this, like I said, a bluegill, you know, a green pumpkin will work. But if the water was a little darker or if we were doing this and it was cloudy, overcast, I'd go with a black and blue color. But that's it, 40 pound SX1 Sunline Braid. Tatula XT Rod, Daiwa Tatula Elite Flip Pitch Reel. That's the setup. There you go. Oh, decent fish. Yeah, man. Finally. Been a long time coming. But we got one, Cody Meyer. We got one, man. On the old punch rod setup. All right, well, that was kind of fun. I mean, we caught some on the Texas rig, caught some foot in the grass, uh, new lake to us, but- uh, Big musky. Big, mu that was fun. Yeah, That was a blast, big old tiger musky on the vibrating jig. So, um, you know, we're gonna go and try some different stuff. Yeah. Uh, maybe fish some shallower, maybe some docks, maybe some riprap type stuff. Tons of stuff here. Shallow. Yeah. But uh, hey, if you guys enjoyed what you've seen this week, make sure and like, share, tag a friend, and uh, stay tuned for more fun videos. Let's go get them. Hey, don't forget to enter the giveaway for your chance to win some cool stuff from Dylan.